Hey everyone, it's Kevin from JJ Hat Center. Still home on the quarantine slash COVID kind of thing, laying low while New York uh, heals itself. Um, but uh, I still can take my uh, 25 years at the hat shop and uh, take all of my information, everything that's in left in there, and bring it out to you guys. So uh, one of you guys can uh, be the new uh, flame keeper, you know? Flame keeper, that's the sign for a flame keeper. <laughs> All right, so anyway, um, I'm carrying a torch, you get it? Olympic torch. Dun, 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 dun. I, I should not do that, but I know. Um, let's get down to it. Today is going to be basically about um, what do you do to your hat and what do you don't do to your hat? What can you do? What's, you know, all right, you, you never find the right exact hat. It always needs some alterations, like you're doing a, uh, a 7 one eighth, and it comes in and it's a little bit tight. So uh, you ask to get it stretched. Should you stretch it? Um, is it better? Should I have just bought it big and padded it down? Um, that's going to look all sloppy, though, and it's, it's going to blow off, right? Yeah, it's going to blow away. I don't know what to do. Uh, what about brims? You know, I find uh, I really want like a two inch brim and I want it in burgundy, but everything burgundy is wide brim. Can I cut the brim? You know, what's up with that? Uh, I hear it used to be like, you know, 20 bucks in the old days. You walk in, they cut it and you're gone. Um, what's involved with that? Is that expensive and do you recommend doing it? Um, what, what do you do to your hat? What do you don't do? Can I cut brims? Can I change a band? Can I take a lining out? Can I take a sweatband out? Um, do I steam a brim? Do I steam a crown? What can I do to it? What do I do not do to it? Can I steam the underside, the overside, inside the crown, outside the crown? Is steaming necessary? Is it good? Why do I need to? Uh, it sounds like it harms the hat more than helps the hat. Should I just avoid it? Unless it's absolutely, yeah, totally, absolutely necessary. Um, what is the deal? So many questions, right? Okay, I'm going to tell you the do's and the do nots. Hopefully my time doesn't run out because uh, I've got a lot of daddy chores to do and I'm hoping I don't get interrupted too soon. Okay, so I'm going to try to um, subject you guys to another song that I've never rehearsed. Um, it's, a, it's an easy song, but I'm going to give it a shot. Um, it's like one of my old, uh, you know, soul uh, uh, heroes and stuff. Uh, it's a Rick James song. She's a very kinky girl Can I go and take her to my mother's room? She will never let your spirits down Taste her. 
that girl who's all with me. you were listening to it was that weird ghost effect which doesn't work that well on uh, acoustic it feeds back all right let me put on my normal effect that's always on there reverse yeah that's the one I like depth a little feedback a little modulation all right out of tune too. Anyway, all right, this is the deal. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about this and stuff. Um, I'm going to bring you in so it's more intimate. I know. You can see my Yoli painting. She's from Peru. You could look her up, Y-O-L-I. It's kind of like her nom de plume. Her real name is uh, much longer and more Spanish. It's hard for me to pronounce. But uh, it's a nice Yoli painting. You can see all the, uh, you know, the 3D work on it. Let me see if I can get in a little closer on it. Yeah, it's very like three-dimensional. I like that gloppy stuff, you know. All right. Let's have a hand for Yoli. Hey. Um. Yeah, I like paintings of like little quiet moments, you know, it's like a really quiet, beautiful, peaceful kind of calm moment. I like those kind of paintings and stuff. I like to kind of look at them to, uh, you know, calm down, light a candle, look at them. I don't know, it's like nice scenery. I'm into paintings. Um, I haven't painted in a very long time. All right, we're talking more about hats today, not so much about uh, paintings, although paintings, hats, the whole art, I guess, right? It's a, a form of, uh, you know, expression. Um, and it's functional, you know, it keeps you warm, it keeps the sun off you, the elements off you, it covers your bald spot, helps you to, like, you know, meet chicks and stuff. A lot of people's lives probably have been affected by, you know, like maybe if they went out with a huge bald spot, they never would have gotten married. This kid would never have been born. That kid, hats, right? They change the world. They definitely make the world go around. Boys in the bed. Nice. No ghost effect today. All right. So... Here's the thing with uh, what you should do to hats and what you shouldn't do to hats and all that stuff. Okay, when you get a hat and then you're ready to buy it, okay, a Western hat, you can tell a guy to steam the brim. It's kind of like a thing. They come in like this and a lot of people like it, you know, like this, or they like it, you know, like this, or, you know, at a little point, or they like the front down, that's a common one, back down. Western brim shaping is common. When you buy a fedora, a fedora has a flange. It's like a, a scoop, this curve. The curve, you know how they call it a snap brim because the brim snaps up and down? Okay. It snaps because of the flange. It's shaped like this. It's scooped here all the way around. Scoop, scoop, scoop. So you could flip it down in the back. You could flip it down anywhere, really, depending on, you know, what you, where you would want to. Yeah, exactly. You could flip it down three quarters and stuff. Although that kind of cool quartery thing, it's not done like that. Generally, it's more like uh, you center the hat, okay? You bring the whole front down, so you run out of room, and then you pull it on one ear. So the hat's angled, so it's centered. So that's that kind of broad, why are you now that you think, hey, Michael Jackson, Fred Astaire, that's it, yeah. Center it, break your brim, pull it at one ear. More to be dramatic, a little bit just to be cool, you know. Works brim up too. Pull it at one ear, that way it's still centered. Okay. That was a good tangent, though, not a bad tangent. Now, 
after you get your brim shaped, you know, the brim is in a new shape, that's a good thing for western hats. But for dress hats, fedoras, stuff like, you know, Saxons, temples, whippets, all those kind of things, you don't get the brim shaped. Some people say, okay, can you uh, steam the brim this way for me? It's not really like that. It's the, the flange, it's that scoop, the curve that allows you to do the shapes. So if I want it to snap in the front, I'm using this, kind of gives you leverage that, you know what I'm saying? A little bit of stiffness and that flange. So you could do those weird side things without me steaming it. Steaming it is going to lock it in this place. That means you're going to have to invert it and never, you know, just leave it like this glued that way. But people leave it this way and it screws it up. What you need to do is keep your rim in perfect shape when it's up. So that way, when you flip it down, it's in perfect shape too. The only way to tell if it's in perfect shape is by looking at it up. You want it to be scooped and the same amount of scoopiness all the way around and the same amount of hardness. It shouldn't be soft and floppy somewhere. Um, certain hats do okay soft and floppy, you know, like very few ones. Very, very, excuse me, I had a dry throat. Very few hats, like vintage hats. Um, Borsalinos that are older than like, you know, five, seven years. Not the new ones. They do okay um, when they're soft. They still snap, uh, you know, for some reason you could just dog them and try to destroy the brim as much as you can, but they still, they snap. This is really soft, you know. So that's the way vintage hats are and stuff. They were made very well out of the best, best, best felt possible. You know, felt that would cost, you know, between 500 and 1,000 today in a hat. You know, and silk linings, real silk, and stitched in linings, and all these little doodads they add here and there that makes it more expensive, like super grade leather, super grade felt, you know. The hats would be commercially impossible to make today without selling them, you know, at really high custom prices. So people do cut corners in certain different ways. Um, some ways are not even cutting corners. They're uh, able to make hats at uh, 175 to, you know, 225 that are immaculate. That can take rain and snow, have all the different edges, the different, uh, you know, uh, textures and finishes and stuff, you know, beaver, velour, or, uh, whatever. And they're fantastic because it's, uh, they just know how to run their company in a good way. Other companies make their hats a little bit thin. Um, so you have to um, look at the felt. Um, make sure it's fur felt. Fur felt is something you want. Beware of something called fur blend. It's generally a cover up for, you know, fur and wool, which could mean, you know, 98% wool and a little fur sprinkled in. 100% uh, fur felt is going to be one of those hats that, you know, lasts like, you know, you see vintage hats from the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, your grandpa's hat. Those things last because they're made out of that stuff. Um, it's just the way it goes. And um, the wool hats can last you a good amount of time if you take care of them. Uh, you know, you can get a couple of decades out of them, but you usually don't. You get less, but you pay way less. So, you know, it's kind of it's a trade off, you know. Um, You don't steam the brim on a fedora, okay? That's what I'm getting at. When you're about to buy it, you can tell the guy, can you steam this, can you steam that on the crown? My advice to you is don't rush into that stuff because your hat is only new and fresh once. And before you walk out of there, you're already making it not new and fresh anymore. You're changing things. And then if you change it back, there'll be wrinkles and crease marks where it used to be and stuff. Make changes slowly and think about it first. The one thing I would say is very, very important you should get done while you're at the hat shop is the height. If you have a problem with the height, right here just in the front is where you lower it. You just tuck it into itself a little bit. You'll lower it down so that slants. From the front it looks just lower, perfect. Okay. That's generally enough to lower your crown. You could tell the guy, can you lower my crown? 
You do it yourself. Steam this area only. Don't steam the brim. Just this area. Cool. And then just down. And then kind of take your fingers and make everything look right, you know, so it's lower, not higher, you know. So you could just bring it down where you want, you know. Okay. You want to tell the guy to steam the crown to get the height right. That's basically your center crease. So if everything is looking really high to you, you're either a new hat wearer who's not used to it, because every new hat wearer, every new fedora wearer, western guy, everything, new hat wearers, thinks the, they all think the crown is too high. After a little while in front of the mirror, after whatever, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, a half an hour, maybe a day or two, you get so used to it, it doesn't look high anymore. You have to decide that. Um, the crown should be not as big as your face. It shouldn't be that big. I'm looking at this as a composition. This is a big shape with kind of a medium shape on top of it. I like it. That's a good crown height. You could go up higher too. Higher is going to look bolder and showier. Lower is going to look more laid back, but also slightly more casual as it goes down. Top hats. They're high, they're very formal, right? Pork pies, they're low, they're very casual. Anything low is going to look more casual. So, yeah. Steam the crown, get your height right, okay? Don't steam much else. You can tighten the pinch without him steaming it. You don't got to steam it and just do it. That's fine. It's half the fun, getting it right the way you want. I like my pinch just at the top. I don't like to pinch all this. So I like to pinch just the top. I like the way that looks. I think it's super cool, you know? You do it yourself, you know? Don't steam it in because maybe you want to keep it stock, you know? And then that way you can just pop it out without pinching it in real hard or steaming it in. You got no marks afterwards. So if you change your mind, don't go and alter your hat at the first second like crazy. Um, as far as band changes, you're going to sweat through this first band anyway. So after you sweat through this, then you could change it after, put your purple band on or something. But, you know, if you absolutely hate the black band, then just have it changed, I guess. Um, understand that changing your band will, um, you know, it's not a permanent thing. It does make your hat not returnable or exchangeable anymore because you customized it. But... Um, one thing you can do is change the band. You can change the band very easily on a western. Generally, you can just pull it off. There's you know, a couple of stitches or a little bit of glue, more likely, no stitches. A little hot glue stick. And then um, you could also just put another band right on top of it. Buy a horsehair band and just throw it, you know, two bands. They look great. Bands are really easy to pull one off. You put the next one on, you tighten it like a belt. But um, fedora bands, you generally have to have them made. They don't have like just stock bands that look good. They have clip-on bands that are 10 bucks, but they don't look good. They look good on straws and stuff. They're very, you know, they don't have bows. And they do even make a grow grain one with a bow that clips on, but it looks horrible. You know, you can see the clip and it's, it just looks so bad. Um, so we don't carry those. But um, you have to have the guy make you a bow and band because every hat has a different size. They're all different sizes. They're all different widths you're going to want, different colors. So it's impossible to stock them. Everybody needs different ones, so it's custom. They'll actually make the bow for you, a double bow, a triple bow, you know. Like, you know, you could copy the bow and say, I want an, uh, a, a Hamilton bow. Um, you guys have a hat called the Hamilton. Kevin really loves their bow. It's got a cool like thing in the middle of the bow. Can you guys make me that band, just like on the Hamilton? But I want it in uh, purple, a nice like magenta purple. They'll get it for you, you know. And um, it might cost you a few bucks. I mean, I don't know what it costs, forty bucks or something like that. But you could do whatever you want. You could take your pork pie and put a, a back bow on it. And you can make uh, the band like really wide, you know, like a wide band like this that goes way up into the pinch and stuff, you know, we'll just raise the pinch a little higher, that's all. But um, a big vintage band with a back bow, maybe a double bow in the back, back bow, that would look incredible. Um, we could do all that custom stuff. Bands can be changed, yes. You can change your band on westerns and on uh, fedoras. Rim cutting. 
brim cutting, no. Um, brim cutting is weird because, okay, here's what happens when you cut a brim, all right? You got like a two and a half inch brim, let's say, okay? Somebody wants to turn this into a two, okay? So you're left with this part. What happens is you cut off the curvy part. You see the part at the end that's all curved, the scoop? That part just gets sliced off and you're left with just the middle, which doesn't have a, a flange, it doesn't have a scoop, it just has a, just a, a little tiny lip, it almost looks like it's curling, it just looks floppy. So in other words, you don't really have a hat, you just have an edge, you have something that's coming out. So that does not look like a brim, it doesn't snap, it's not, nothing like a brim. When you cut it, you have to have it cut and reflanged which means they take the wooden uh, mold, which kind of looks like a wooden toilet seat, it's big and heavy and stuff, and there's two or three pieces, uh, and they put the hat on the, on the uh, mold, kind of like you know, upside down, and they reshape the new size two inch to have a, a smaller flange, you know, a nice snap to it. Because um, you basically cut the snap off of it, you gotta put a new snap in that's only two inches longer. So we have to almost remanufacture the hat, but just half of it, the brim. So that costs money. So what you got to do now is get your brim cut. You have to have it reflanged, okay? Which is basically blocking the hat, blocking half of it, just the brim, not blocking the top. That's not cheap. I don't know what that costs. Maybe 50, 60 bucks or something. I'm gonna guess 50. Um, and the brim cutting job itself is not cheap either. Um, and then you've got the edge. Do you just want a raw edge? Do you want a bound edge? A bound edge to match, you know, a little ribbon to match your custom band is always hot. That costs more too, you know, uh, another 40 bucks for, you know, binding or something. So, you know, it's not that cheap to have a hat uh, altered, you know, in the brim cut. It's not 10, 20 bucks like they said. That's if you're taking off like an eighth of an inch, maybe a little quarter might work, you know. Um, but uh, that's something they used to do in the old religious hat shops, you know. They would come in with their five inch brims and stuff and they would turn it into like, you know, whatever, a little three and three quarters or, you know. And um, it works on hats that are huge, maybe, but uh, only to some extent. You can't take a lot, lot off. So, um, yeah, cutting brims, nah, you can't do it because it's, it's expensive. You got the bucks and you want to invest in that hat, good. But otherwise, it's like this. Um, the guy's going to charge you a bunch. It's going to be like, you know, what, 150 or something for the job. And then you might not be happy with it. You know, you'll see it and it'll be kind of like a weak curve or it'll be too soft or too hard. It, you know, just not exactly like you expected where the hat doesn't balance out the same, the top is really high with this little curve, you know, and it looks like a uh, Chico Marx hat or something. Um, not necessarily a bad thing, but um, you don't really know what that's going to look like if you do an extreme brim cut, like a half inch like that. And a half inch is a lot on a hat, you know. Two inches a small brim, you know, like a Sinatra hat. Two and a half is like a really big brim, so that's the difference between you know, half inch. So, you know, something small, you could do little tiny cuts, I'd say, but I would stay away from the brim cutting thing. It's not easy to do. I wouldn't do it. Um, buy the right brim and just do something else. Change the band or something. Um, it's easier to have, you know, um, a, a brim flattened. You know, you could do maybe flatten out a brim somewhat. Um, that could be done. If you bring it into JJ's, they will charge you for it though. It's a, it's a process. It's basically blocking a hat. Same thing, it's flanging a hat with a flat flange. So, you know, he puts just a flat kind of a donut thing on it. It looks like a wagon wheel, you know, with a hole in the middle over the brim. It's very heavy. And then he's got like weights that go on that. And there's this big like a uh, sandbag. It almost looks like a hydraulic machine. A huge sandbag drops on it. He's got a uh, really big steamer there and uh, I don't know what else there's something like uh, you know a microwave oven that he cook he dries them in it's like a, like a hat dryer but um, hat makers have a lot of things that they do to hats and uh, you know they want to get paid for it so all that custom work it costs 
cost money. Um, yeah, it's not like just cutting it and zip to 20 bucks, you're out. It's a big wait to, you have to, you know, wait a while for it. Um, things you can do to your hat, okay, you can steam the top, you could steam the brim, okay, you can do all this stuff. If they're out of shape, the brim on a fedora can be steamed and reshaped. Um, but you don't steam it to put things like, you know, cool shapes in, you know, can you do this for me? That's not done with steam, you just do that. Um, now, a western hat is different. A western brim you can shape, okay? You can steam and shape. Uh, you can have it rolled and this and that. Um, they're super, um, what do you call it, stiff? They're like, you know, very, very stiff. A lot of stiffener and they're thick. So when you do some intricate shapes like this, and you zap it with a really hot steam, that stiffener kind of melts for a second, cool, and cools into a really hard, hard, you know, plasticky, hard kind of thing, you know? And it stays. It's not like your fedora that's all soft and mushy and squishy. It's like a... Western hats have a little bit of that to it. And um, if they don't, they're not that easy to, to shape. You start steaming it and steaming it, and you're like, hey, why isn't this working? It's the stiffener that you're steaming. So you got to make that thing stiff before it works. So, um, yeah, you can steam anything to reshape it, um, but you never steam the underside, ever. Um, that's one thing you don't do. I don't really steam the underside. Um, sometimes I'll steam here and I'll push from behind to get the flange back. Like if a hat is flat, I'll steam it right in this pocket. Steam is going in there and I'll push from behind as it gets soft. Just to make the, uh, the flange, to get it back. And once it's like that, then I use a tabletop, like a, a straight edge, to get the edge of it straight while, you know, not flattening out the flange. I just do it gently. So I just the edge goes straight then. Um, I never steam this side though. I always have the steam on this side of the hat. Um, the hat is also protecting my hands and stuff from the steam, you know. But if you go this way and put steam this way, the band will get burned and shrink. Uh, on a vintage hat, it can happen in a matter of like milliseconds. It's just like, tss, it just turns into nothing. It burns up and you, it's not like you could recondition, it's just gone. It basically burns up into like uh, no, no water at all. Cause it's like, you know, generally, let's say I'll, I'll throw out a number. Uh, leather is usually like 3% uh, water in there or, or like uh, oils or moisture, whatever's in there that keeps it moist, you know. If you get a vintage hat, it might have one tenth of one percent left. It's still dry, but you know, not flaky yet, you know, but it's dry because the thing is like 80 years old. If you hit that with steam, that last tiny little grain of moisture or oil, whatever's in there, it just disappears in a flash, like, and the whole thing turns into like rawhide. It just turns into like a dog bone, kind of like a rolled up kind of a dowel and the leather's gone, so you've got to get new leather. So it might not happen with a new hat with very moist, you know, good, beautiful leather, but for an older hat or something that, you know, you've had a long time, it can happen in a flash. So if you ever see any leather that's like shrunken up in one side, you know, just like really tiny, like it looks like it's shrunken and kind of burnt, and there's almost nothing left in one area, that's what it is. Somebody steamed the inside of the hat, and that little area that's shrunken also feels hard and crumbly. Like, it comes apart in your hands, and it's hard, almost like a rawhide dog bone. It just crumbles into pieces. Well, the, the rest of it might be okay. So, that's what happens to a band when you steam it. Um, not always, but there's a real good chance it could happen. So, yeah, don't do it. And then if it doesn't happen, what you're doing is you're helping it on its way. So you might have taken out, uh, you know, 75% of its oils or, and moisture content by just steaming the inside. And then the next guy who touches it with a steamer, it'll go, you know. So, you know, don't do it. Don't steam the inside of a hat ever. That's something I've seen idiots do. Um, I'm going to sterilize it now. And they sterilize the inside, which is like, 
some little brilliant assy thing they made up themselves. Um, generally teenagers who are just kind of winging it and have a little like, uh, I don't know, ego kick because they're the hat guy in front of the steamer. I'm going to sterilize it now. Stop his ass. Be like, you know what? Don't sterilize it. Kevin told me that line right there is the line of the mark of a jackass. So, um, you don't sterilize the inside of a hat with a leather band because you burn the leather. Now, if it has a cloth band inside, a ribbon band, anything that is not leather, some bands, some hats don't have leather bands, like light felt, wool hats, wool crushables, they have cloth sweatbands. Other hats, rollable hats, have ribbon sweatbands. Okay, if there's no leather inside there, steam the heck out of it. You could steam it. I mean, I don't really see a reason to, but um, I've gotten out away with not steaming the underside. But you could, you know, I guess you could kill a couple of bacteria, give it a little quick shot. Um, so yeah, if you tell that guy he's a jackass and then he turns the hat around and it's got a cloth sweatband, he's going to burn you. So make sure it's got a leather sweatband before you open your mouth. Um, or maybe, yeah, don't open your mouth. That's, that's a character flaw of mine, I guess. Um, she's a super freak that with me. beater you know if you've got one like really nice one and a couple of kind of sort of nice ones and then three old ones and then one like really old one take the really old one wear that one see how it reacts you know it might be perfect then take the second to oldest wear that one in a blizzard see how that one reacts you know but you know don't take the really good ones they're not meant for that they can still be waterproof and lose their shape completely you know what I'm saying? Oh, water never got through it, but, uh, you know, it just settled and dried flat. Something like a veal cutlet. So a veal cutlet has a sort of a flat shape where um, a hat brim, you know, see, it has this kind of like a, a scoop to it. And then if you turn it around, the scoop is always there. So it's kind of a, I don't know what the shape is called, but it's a, it's a flange. Okay a snap brimmy kind of a shape. That, you want to preserve it. Preserve what? The curve, yeah, okay. Preserve the curve. So, um, yeah, fedoras, the felts are soft. They're not meant for um, lizards. They're not meant for heavy rain downpours. They're meant for softness. Um, they're meant for comfort. They're meant for keeping you warm, keeping, you know, the sun off you, and keeping you looking fashionable. Um, otherwise, you know, you could just wear some sort of, like, hood or something, or, you know, some flat, like, army sort of hood thing or something. I don't know. These are fashion items. You don't want them getting all messed up and out of shape and looking like an old vagrant's hat. 
then who cares if it's like a $250 hat? You still look like a bum, you know? I'd rather wear a $25 made in China wool felt fedora that's brand new than a $250 piece of garbage that looks just like, you know, an old vagrance, you know, kind of like that. It's all like old and shrunken up. As long as a hat looks nice and new and neat, that's nice, you know, that's presentable and stuff. Um, now, here's another thing. What you should do with your fur felt hat is you should have it steamed, brushed every once in a while, um, brushed counterclockwise. You could use something soft, like a, a burn brush. We sell them hat brushes. Or uh, something a little spiky, you know, like a, a shoe brush that's like wiry, kind of, like a hard brush. If you have a shoe brush or a clothing brush that's clean, totally clean, I mean, you know, really clean, never used on shoes. Something like that you can use. You always go counterclockwise on the top. So just brush counterclockwise. Now, if you have a wool felt hat, not fur felt, it's wool. Wool stuff, I can never pronounce that word, wool. I think it's the back of my tongue, wool. Okay, if, if you have a wool felt hat, um, now every time I say that, people are gonna be aware of the fact that I can't say wool. Um, you've got one, don't use the brush. It's not, uh, it's not doing anything. It, it pushes a few grains around get packing tape. Packing tape rings, wipe it down, wipe it down real aggressively. You won't scratch the hat, not a wool hat, you're not gonna scratch it. Make, just keep turning the, the rings, turn the ring, get all the wool, lint off of it, do the whole brim. It's gonna take you a few rings. Keep making them, keep making them. Real packing tape, don't use some fake stuff or something. Get the good sticky stuff, the clear one or the brown one. Make rings. Do the edge of the brim here. Only wool hats attract dust there. So you're gonna see lint on the edge of every one of your wool hats, unless it has a bound edge, obviously. You have a light felt hat, take it on the edge. You're gonna do the, what do you call it, the tape rings. Do the underside. Okay, keep turning your tape rings and keep using more until every speck of dust is gone. The thing will look brand new. Um, people have tipped me for like 20 years for doing that. You know, it, it's a lot of elbow grease sometimes. Sometimes it could take, you know, like 20, 30 tape rings and, you know, you're sitting there scrubbing for like 20 minutes. Um, but um, the whole thing is worth it because uh, it costs next to nothing and it's going to look brand new and anybody can do it. So, um, hi. Anybody can do it, it's a simple thing. For wool felt, it's great. For fur felt, it's also good. Make the tape rings, wipe it down, pack it down. Um, for the bands, you can do the tape on the band too. I generally like to take the brim brush and go upward with the grow grain. Get the, the, uh, the dust out of it. That'll get that out. Pat it down, pat it down, get everything off, get it all off. Um, boom, that's it. Um, I think the tape does like maybe 90, 98% of the job usually, where the steam doesn't do all that much. It does a lot more for shaping, but for, you know, cleaning, eh, you don't need the steam. The steam does on the fur help make the fur kind of stand up and it gets the dust out a little bit. But yeah, yeah, the tape's way more important uh, than the brush, and the tape's more important than the I don't know. I, I'm going to say that the steam is important for shaping, but it's not important for cleaning that much, you know. Um, I use things like tape to get the dust off, okay. No matter what, if it's wool, it's all done in tape. I don't use any uh, brushes. Um, if it's a fur felt, I get it off with the tape, then I brush it counterclockwise. I brush it so everything looks smooth and I'm steaming at the same time. It gets all the hairs popping up and then sort of going the right direction so there's no more fingerprints and scratches on it. That's one thing that uh, steam does. It kind of takes all the little scratches off. It just makes them kind of fade. Um, and little fingerprints that are impressions. It makes the felt kind of stand up in the same direction. They're like, you know, this, and it makes it kind of... Um, so yeah, it's a good thing, I guess, but you don't need your brush on your wool felt hats. Um, 
the tape is everything pretty much. And um, what can you do? What can't you do? I'm gonna say what else is important as far as you know a hat stretcher hat stretching okay here's the thing hat stretching I don't like to do it um, it's always bad it makes new hats look used old um, it's so brutal it makes the hat kind of get all destroyed and then I have to kind of reshape it again if you don't brutally stretch it and overstretch it it does nothing it just shrinks back the next day. If you do it my way and really severely overstretch it to the point right before you feel like you're gonna start doing damage to it, you know, right before that, you let it just hold this a while, steam it in, and then you take it out and you have to basically fix everything. The brim's all out of shape, the crown has to be opened, reshaped again. It's time consuming. Um, but a stretch like that is the only thing that really works. So if you need your, your stretch to be 20% bigger, I'm gonna have to stretch it like 60 or 80% or something like that, or 100. And by the time it shrinks back, you'd be lucky to get 10 or 15%, you know? You probably won't get 20. Um, tiny, tiny stretches, maybe. Yeah, they're okay. Um, I'd rather just try to stretch it over my knee. I just, I literally just pull it, you know, over my knee a little bit, just kind of pull it over your knee. It's not the worst thing. Yeah, it feels really big now. You can do that. I feel that safer than actually using a hat stretcher. Hat jacks are the worst because they make a big line and a hat, like, it only stretches here. So it's like, mm -hmm, you know, and then you have to blend the top into it, which is a big job that I know I can do. You guys probably can't do out there without, you know, all the JJ equipment. Again, I open up the entire crown, nice and wide, open it, and then I have to reshape that whole crown again because it's got that stair step, you know. That's hat jacks. Uh, if you're going to use a hat jack, try to line the, the stretch up with the top of your hat band so that the stretch mark is hidden by this line right here. You put your hat jack right there so when it comes out, and you take the hat jack out, you got a big crease mark, it's hidden by that line, not up here or something where it's real obvious. That's a trick from Kev. The other thing is when you put a hat jack in, okay, and you're doing a hat jack stretch, steam just the back, right where the, pre the um, seam is, okay, you want that seam to loosen up and get more elastic, so you're heating it up from the back. Steam the back. What this does is it makes the uh, stretch happen only in the back and not in the front. So the people seeing you don't see any malformations in front. All the stretchy side effects are in the back. So the back basically goes, you know, kind of out. You stretched it, this part out, right? And then you blend it back in. The front is exactly the way it was before. The way you do that is by using the heat in the back. That part softens up that part and it makes the stretch happen right there only. Um, also, you can't steam it on the inside, you'll burn the leather. So you steam it through there to loosen, not to loosen, to soften up and make this seam, the stitches here, more elastic. So when you're cranking it open, those are nice and elastic and stretchy and they don't pop. You don't want it to pop. So that's what you do and it also makes the stretch happen in the back only one of my secrets. So stretching, no. Don't do it. Try not to do it. The only time you do it is when you have a hat already at home that you can't return, you can't exchange, you can't sell, can't give it away, and you want to wear it because you can't wear it now, it's too tight. You can have it stretched. For me, I'd rather just pull the sweatband out. I just take some razor blade, I cut right in here, take the stitches out, and I leave a little leather in the front like, you know, about six, eight inches in the front here where my head goes against it. I don't know, maybe like the front, the front half, like that. I leave that and I cut the rest out. I just remove the leather, pull it totally out. The front part stays in, it's still sewn in. And uh, I have a little leather thing to, you know, go against my head to keep the sweat. But the hat loosens up like two whole sizes or something. That's my thing. I don't like hat stretching because it just ruins the hat so much. Anybody else who does your hat stretch is going to stretch it way less than me. 
and then by the time you wake up tomorrow, it's all going to be back. Um, there's so much pressure in here that it just contracts. Now the trick is there is a reed in here. It's a piece of fishing line. So in the back where the seam is, you got to clip it right here. Just clip that little, the part that looks white to you, clip that right in the seam. And then you'll see some fishing line on each side kind of coming out of the little tubes. Okay, basically, that pressure is now relieved. So you don't have like a piece of fishing line, like a circle of piano wire, like over your head when the hat is too tight. Too tight. That's a lot of pressure. Think, think of a ring of piano wire just pulling down over your, you know what I mean? Once you clip that and cut it, the pressure is relieved and the hat will start stretching. You can stretch it over your knee every day. Just give it like some stretch and stretch, stretch. Clip the reed. Clip the reed and stretch it naturally over your knee. Um, you'll find it makes a big difference. I say avoid the hat stretchers. Avoid asking Kevin to stretch your hats. I'm happy to do it for anybody. I've been doing it for 20 years and I do it free when, you know, when it's me, but I don't like doing it and it's bad for the hat. And the disclaimer is it can rip the leather. The leather can tear. You never know. If it's already dry, it's definitely going to tear. If it's nice and, you know, supple, probably won't, but it still could. Um, you know, I could patch that up with a little piece of leather if it's a big, you know, gap or something. But, uh, yeah. It takes so much out of it, I hate to stretch a hat. So I'm gonna say no on the hat stretching. What you need to do, okay, here's the do. We just went over it, don't. The do is gonna be like this. Buy your hats big, all right? So if you're like, okay, I'm between a 57 and a 58, what should I get? Don't even ask, just get the 58. Go bigger. Most likely the thing's gonna run a little funny. It's gonna run either tight or loose or something. Um, you need that extra room because all you got to do is pick it up and in the back behind your head you lift this up and you put a little padding. Weather stripping, 3 8 inch is the best. It's got sticky in the back and it's just a little piece of foam. You put it back there, a little strip. If it's not enough, you put an inch there and an inch there and you extend it. You make it into like a whatever, an 8 inch piece. Put this back. By the time you wear it a few days and that compresses, by the time you wear it like a week, you won't even know it's in there anymore. You just forget uh, forget about it. You know, months from now, years from now, you don't remember it's in there. Um, sometimes people ask me to stretch their hats, loosen it up, and then I pick that up and they're like, what's that? And I say, well, it's all padded. You've got tons of padding in there. You should have just removed it. And they say, I don't remember putting that padding in. Well, nobody remembers it because you can't really feel it if you do it right. Do it in the back. Use weather stripping. Don't improvise. Um, or use a cap band new. Which, uh, we sell them. We call them sweat bands. Um, sometimes we sell out. If we do, you could get it on Amazon. It's called cap band new. C-A-P-B-A-N-N-U. It's a, uh, a cotton um, piece of weather stripping. So instead of foam, it's actually like a cotton pillow. So those, you could size it and put it on the inside of the leather or the outside, right against your, your head. Of course, they're cotton and they're comfortable, absorbent and stuff. They're really nice for tightening up hats. Um, we sell them for five bucks, I think. Uh, just go to jjhatcenter.com and uh, look for a sweat band. It's in accessories. We sell them usually. Uh, when we're out, Go to Amazon, get the Cap Band New, like Cat Baloo, worst product name ever, right? Um, we call them sweat wicks in the store. It's a sweat wick. Does it wick sweat away from you? But you can call it a sweat band online, or you could call us and just say, can you send me a sweat wick? We'll put it in an envelope. It's like five bucks or something, you know? You could take care of that even with a credit card. Um, sweat wicks are great for sizing hats and they also block perspiration to keep perspiration from ever touching your hat. The only way, somebody asked me the other day, how do I clean sweat stains from a straw? You can't. It's permanent. Sweat stains in a straw or felt, it doesn't come out. Okay, it's supposed to go into this band, wick it into the bands, and then when you see stains here, it tells you it's time to do something. You've got to change the bands, change your sweat band inside, or something. Generally, what I do is I put a cap banu, aka sweat wick, aka sweat band in our catalog. I put one in the front, 
and that keeps sweat from ever touching the hat ever again. That way I never get sweat stains on my hat. I don't put them in at the beginning because I don't like the feeling of them. Um, they stay wet when they get wet, it, where leather you could dry with a hanky, you know. So you got to freshen them up every once in a while, you know. Um, you know, you change them like a couple of times every summer, a few times, um, but they're five bucks. So you, you, know, you could get three of them and change them, you know, every few weeks. It's no big deal. Um, most likely you don't wear your hat that much, so you can keep a sweat like in for kind of a long time, you know. And it's a really good product. Now, um, sizing down is smart. Okay, go bigger. If you're in doubt, just go a little big. Don't go hugely big. But you know, if you're between sizes, go for the bigger one. Um, if you've gotten some seven one eighths that have been tight on you and some that are okay, don't take the chance. Go for the quarter. Tighten up that quarter to a seven one eighth and change. Maybe you're seven one eighth. Point five, you know what I mean? You're seven one eighth and a little bit more, so get that quarter and then just, you know, whether it's you're an eighth or a little more, you'll just just size it down. It's easy to do with a tiny bit of foam in the back and nobody cares, you know. It's just non invasive. But when you go tight, you got big problem. If your hat is too tight, I suggest send it right back. Okay. I overstated my case because I like to do that when something is important. Um, things to do to hats. Don't stack your hats. If you gotta stack them, put something between them. Okay, either hat rings, cardboard rings. You see my uh, video on it. make your own hat rings. Or um, cellophane. Get a big sheet of saran wrap. Put it over your hat. So go hat, sheet of saran wrap, hat, sheet, hat, sheet. What that does is protects this bow right here. Because the top hat, what it does, it goes on, on top and it squishes this bow and it makes all these wrinkles. So you need to keep something between the two. Here's the wrinkles you want to avoid. Use the saran wrap. You could use the top end of a, a, sh a grocery shopping bag. You know, just cut some of it off. Um, the handle part, cut a few inches off and use it as a cap to cover just the crown. And then just do hat plastic cap, hat, plastic cap. They call those dust covers. Um, and it also keeps the dust off your hat and it protects your bands from getting squashed for the, from the next one on top of it. So if you want to stack your hats, put something between your hats, like a dust cover or a ring, um, saran wrap, top part of the grocery wrap, it's okay. You can do that. But keep the stack upside down. Invert the stack so it should sit on its crown, not on its brim. Um, that's good. Keep little stacks in the closet upside down, you know, uh, stacks of two, stacks of three, that's fine, stacks of four. Um, don't put stacks this way. They shouldn't be right side up because then you're going to be really mashing the brim on the bottom hat, you know. If you don't care about the bottom hat, sacrifice it. If you got a crappy hat, you know, or you like the brim to be out of shape, put that one on the bottom and stack them right side up. That's okay. But, you know, separate them. Um, what you can't do is uh, hot rooms. Don't put them someplace hot. Keep them cool. It does shrink the leather sweatbands and your hats get small. So if you got that blasting heat, avoid that. Um, what else can you do to a hat? Alright, I'm going to say when it's raining, you can wear a lot of hats in the rain. Most of the western uh, fur felts will be fine. Um, some of your fedoras will do great, some will do not so great, and they'll curl up, but here's the deal. If you get caught in the rain, you get caught out there, this is what you got to do, okay? Alright. Keep your brim up. Even if you like to wear your brim down, just go like this while it's getting wet. Okay, this is a stronger position. It's preserving the curve. It's keeping everything natural. Okay, keep it like that. Just go through the rain. Don't walk under the awnings and hide from the rain. If you go under the awnings and you know the, the doorways and stuff, that's where the dirty water is going to be pouring off the building. So you're going to get water on your hat, you know, with stains and salt and mud on it. Let the regular rain just get on it. It's better than hiding, you know. Um, when you get home, you know, check your crown. Make sure it's in the correct shape. If you have to open it up and just shape it again, stock shaping, get it right. Your brim has to be up. Flip it up, 
check it, make sure it's fairly straight, not wavy and wiggly. Okay, hang it up or invert it. If you're hanging it and the weight of the water is making the hat do something like this, you don't want that. Hanging is bad then, okay? Then invert it. I'm gonna say inverting it is probably better. Keep it away from heat. Don't put it by heat. Keep it cool, open the window, that's good for it, cool air. Um, there are some people who do this thing. They reverse the sweatband and they stand it on the sweatbands. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, I think in some of the Stetson booklets they tell you to do that. Like the ones that come in the hats, those little orange booklets. You could dry it like this. Sometimes it might dry with waves in the leather, but that will only happen if your house is kind of hot. So if it's nice and cool, you won't get that. And that's it. Check your crease here. If it's got a weird grabby kind of shape, that's going to lock in when it dries. So make sure the crease is the way it should be. And, um, you know, invert it. Whatever you do with the brim, the next day it'll be like that. So if you dry it with a weird thing like that, the next day it's going to kind of dry in with that thing, you know. So let me go around, straighten it up. Um, what else should you not do with your hat? Hmm. I'll tell you one thing that's good to do with your hat. Put your phone number inside it, okay? Put your name, write Kevin, and then uh, your email or your phone number. That way when you leave it in the